Welcome back to your favorite intermediate algebra class. We're going to solve um, some quadratic equations today and then apply those to a uh, to real life problem. So let's revisit the square root for a minute, the definition. If r is the square root of s, um, I should say r is the square root of s if s squared, r squared equals s. So for example, um, let's look at uh, 3. 3 is the square root of 9 if 3 squared equals what's underneath there, 9. And I say, well, that's true. Okay, so 3 is like the principal root. Okay. Um, for the square root of 9, that, that's the principal root we call that. Well, if you think about this, you also have another, another root here. Isn't negative 3 is also the square root of 9 since... Negative 3 squared equals 9, right? So both 3 and negative 3 are roots. Plus minus 3 are uh, are the square root of 9. So that's like, that's why if you're solving things like x squared equals 9 and you run the square root on it, so you put the radicand over those, both of those, because the square root of x squared, you say, well, x could be both plus and minus 3 here. Because think about originally x squared was 9, right? So 3 squared was 9, so it satisfies the original. And also negative 3 squared is 9, okay? So just to revisit for that uh, definition of the square root, you get two roots there. We typically say just the principal root. If somebody just asks us what's the square root of 16, we usually just answer for the principal root, right? But there are two roots there. All right, properties of square roots. You have this product property, you have this quotient property, as you recall. So we're going to apply both of those. Square root of AB can be split up into square root of A times the square root of B and the quotient property similarly. So if you look at this uh, square root of 27, so you know what, let me break that up into uh, 9 times 3. And uh, let me break that 9 into its factors, 3 times 3 times 3. And you're looking for two of a kind because a square root is the second root. They don't write that green little two, but you're looking for two of a kind. So you got three, so you break that out of jail, and what are you left with? Just the three underneath there. Because you know you know that the square root of nine is three, right? So you put that three out front, if you will, and whatever's left over is underneath. So you got three root three there. How about square root of five times the square root of fifteen? You can use this uh, product property. To say, well, I can put them both underneath five times fifteen, and let me break those up into the factors. Five times five times three. Fifteen is five times three. Again, I got two of a kind. What's the square root of twenty-five? You know, when you got two of those, you break it out of jail. You're left with the three underneath, right? Square root of twenty-five is five. So you put the five out front. Or in other words, if you got two of a kind, you put that pull that number out. Okay. So look at this next one, quotient property. Square root of five over the square root of thirty-six. And then you can say, well, square root of five, and I know the square root of thirty-six is just six. So square root of 5 over 6. Make sure your denominator does not have a radical. You cannot have irrational numbers in your denominator. So like this one, for instance. Square root of 13 over the square root of 3. I can't do anything with either of those to simplify them. But I say I cannot have a square root of 3 in my denominator. No irrational numbers in my denominator. So what do I do to rationalize that? Well, I multiply it by the square root of 3. But if I do it to the bottom, i got to do it to the top, because square root of 3 over square root of 3 is 1. I'm just multiplying this by 1. And again, why did we do that? Well, what's the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? That's the square root of 3 times 3, or in other words, 3. So I just got a 3 on the bottom. That's why we did that. All right, now let's do the top here. Square root of 13 times 3. And uh, that doesn't help me at all, so I just put them back together. Square root of 39 all over 3 is how that thing is simplified. Okay, so that's a nice little revisit for radicals. Well, let's actually apply these uh, rules and so forth to quadratic equations. The first thing you want to do when you have something like this, so you have this perfect square, you see the x minus 2 is, is squared there. You want to isolate, you want to isolate the perfect square before you run the square root on it. 
isolate the perfect square. Okay, so let's get rid of that one half. Well, how do you get rid of that fraction in front? You multiply it by its reciprocal. Two over one, so you got two over two here. See that? Okay. So now you got x minus two quantity squared equals sixteen. Now the perfect square is isolated, so you just take the square root. Both sides here. So square root, square root. And you notice you have the square root of x minus 2 quantity squared. Well, that's the same thing as x minus 2, x minus 2, right? In other words, you see how I got 2 of a kind? 2 of a kind, so it's just x minus 2. So I'm undoing the square, right? And you got to consider both roots here. So when you take the square root of 16, you got to say plus or minus 4. Plus or minus 4, because the square root of 16 is 4. Okay, and then we solve this thing. Add 2 both sides x equals 2 plus or minus 4 well that is actually two answers it's 2 plus 4 and it's 2 minus 4 so you got 6 and you got negative 2 here okay and if you were to make sure you plug them into the original make sure it satisfies the original equation okay let's do one more here one third times x plus 7 squared equals 8. So again, we're going to isolate that perfect square. So 3 over 1, one in this case. So you have x plus 7 squared all by itself. Over here we got 24. Now we can run the radical on this thing. Take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x plus 7 quantity squared is just x plus 7. Again, the square root kind of undoes that square. Now you got the square root of 24 here, and you got to consider both roots here, plus minus. All right, now let's uh, let's take this one. Uh, 24 is 4 times 6. And I'm like, well, 4 is 2 times 2. Uh, 6 is 2 times 3. Do I have two of a kind? There's two of a kind. 2. I'm going to put those two back together. 6. So x plus 7 is plus minus 2 root 6. Solve for x. Negative 7 plus or minus 2 root 6. So there's both my answers. I cannot combine those. Those are not like terms right there. So I just leave it as is. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's apply this to some uh, real life example here. Modeling a falling object's height. So this h equals negative 16 t squared plus h subscript 0. That equation is for any object that's falling on Earth. Okay, we're, we're considering air resistance to be negligible here, okay? So H subscript 0 right there, that's your initial height, okay? T is your time in seconds. T is your time in seconds right there, okay? And H is the height that the object's at after T seconds. H height in feet after T seconds, okay? So, for this example down here, you drop a football from a window, okay, so you got this, uh, you got this building, you got this uh, window right here, here's the window's ledge, right, you drop this, and, and we're up, we're up 20 feet high here, okay, we drop this football, Ooh, that's not the prettiest football, but anyways, we drop this thing from a height of 20 feet, okay, and then uh, how much time is the football falling for how many seconds after uh, your friend catches it at a height of four feet? So right here, uh, your friend catches it. Oh, good catch with stick arm person. Yeah, I love math. Okay, anyways, that's uh, four feet right here, that height that they catch that football. Okay. So I say, well, height h is negative 16 t squared plus h subscript 0. h, negative 16 t squared plus h subscript 0. And I say, well, what was the initial height? First of all, we're solving for time t. The initial height was 20 feet. We dropped it from a 20-foot window. The height after t seconds was how many seconds did it take for you to catch it 4 feet above the ground? Okay, and now we just can't solve this for t, so we subtract 20, both sides. We just isolate that perfect square there. Negative 16 equals negative 16 t squared. Uh, isolate that perfect square again, so isolate t squared. 
negative 16 over negative 16 is 1. So 1 equals t squared. That's annoying me. I'm going to put it this way. t squared equals 1. And then we take the square root on that perfect square. Square to t squared is t. Make sure you consider both roots. So is t one second or is it negative one second? And you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Obviously, it's after one second exactly your friend catches that football at four feet high. Okay, at least on Earth. All right, make sure you guys bring any questions to class. We'll see you soon.